This is an AudioVox recording. All AudioVox recordings are in the public domain. I'm just practicing for my next job when the streaming thing doesn't work out. Um, so let's get started. It's Sparkle Horse Arena. It's going to be... If it's not that, it's the Postal Service. I like driving those little trucks. Sparkle Horse Arena, it's going to be Rapid Chess 7 plus 2. I think we're, we're good to go. Acer Bay was just online 20 minutes ago. He maybe had some problems with his computer. Something like that. It's weird to start a stream without him. So, guys, we're doing the arena every Tuesday night. Don't believe the hype. There's no world championship tie breaks today. Some people would like you to believe that, but it's not the case. Tomorrow I'm going to get my stream absolutely subjugated by the by the world championship. But today, there is no world championship. Mr. Coffee, who was supposed to go to a tournament this weekend and didn't go. Everyone, give him the look of shame. The look of shame for Mr. Coffee, who didn't go. That's right. That's right. All right. <laughs> We're just we're just giving you our time, um, treating you the way a, a losing House of Representatives election night uh, loser would be treated by Donald Trump. No, no, just kidding. Um, Mr. Coffee, we don't mind. It's all right. Morales, what's up? JCS, Nefedov. Um, we're gonna get started with the Sparkle Horse Arena here, and it's just starting in 13 minutes. So basically, rapid chess, casual arena. Um, you get freezing rain. Man, we've got bad weather up here in Zombie Land. Zombie Land, Massachusetts. Pretty far east. Almost as east as you can go. I guess Maine goes out further. I have to ask Soltigo though. I, he's which part of Maine is he from? Our our main moderator who's not here, he's been ill. Battle of the East. To see who's the farthest east in the United States. I think I'm pretty close. Um, understand, understand, Mr. Coffee. I'm just sorry. One of our, um, one of our regulars, Move Eleven, did. Uh, he did play in that tournament. He did pretty well. He did pretty well, but lost his last round game. Unfortunately, he played in the open session. I think he had two and a half out of six, but sadly, could have had like basically a master level performance if he had held the last round game. All right, so we've got Sparkle Horse, Jacob Morales, Hissednunce. Nice to see Hissednunce again from France. Friend of the stream here. El Swaf, that's a new player. Stuk, also a subscriber. Let me toss the um, let me toss the the thing out there. The whatever it is, the URL. So you guys know, you got some other tournaments coming up, Mr. Coffee. All right, Hissednunce is here. So he's a longtime Lee Chess member, I think. Lee Chesser. You were playing a Fiona's tournament. Ah. Uh, she's holding tournaments in the same time as me now? It, I thought it said something about informal stream. Now she's got informal tournaments. Alright. Alright, very well. Cheat on cheat on the stream. Cheat cheat with others. That's cool. Alright. We've got a rapid tournament, seven plus two. It's serious stuff. I'd like to welcome everybody. These are our, our mascots. I bet she doesn't have mascots. Hello. Not all streamers have strange pandas. But a little bit of entertainment for you guys. My puppet master routine. I'm telling you, we need to think of another job for me if it doesn't work out. Hello. Maybe you can be a ventriloquist. Those are the macro and micro pandas. We found out Amy's name. <laughs> I'm not going to release, release it here on the stream. I have a cell phone, and uh, I've been getting like so many annoying texts and stuff and, and messages for this Amy, who was the previous owner of my cell phone. Now I know her, her actual name. I could do a background check. But, um, you know, in honor of Amy, we get a lot of support here on the stream. Dim this week, Merle Dixon, Asturbate, and they need to support the stream yesterday. If you want to support Amy, or maybe getting rid of Amy from my phone you can help to support the stream. Um, I think I threw out the uh, the link there. This is the Sparkle Horse Arena link. I have to do a background check.
Support the background check for my phone. Support the stream. So we've got nine players thus far. Already Fufkin joined. Uh, Mule Skinner. Azawaga. I haven't seen Azawaga in a long time. Uh-oh. Cormoran is here, and he's fast and tough. Now, I don't know if that's a threat to play. Usually he always comes late. But if, uh, if Cormoran... If Cormoran plays, he'll be a serious threat in this tournament. Usually he joins the tournament late. Yeah, he's up there 2261. Cormoran KR. Dangerous and creative player. Kind of wild style. Kissendon says, Sunday I played an over-the-board game and learned that you can lose opposite color bishop end games. It's possible, especially, you know, the more pawns you have down. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, particularly two pawns down where the pawns are separated or, or generally, you know, even connected. Connected are even better. Any kind of two pawns down is usually very difficult to hold. There are exceptional positions with three pawns down. You know, we had one with one of my students last week or two weeks ago, which was really amazing. Like three pawns down, three against nothing, and it was a fortress draw. That's kind of rare. But yeah, absolutely possible to lose. CM is a candidate master. Nils is in the house? Or Nils, what? Did I see Nils there? Basically, what happened? JCS says, Nils, hello, sorry about your result. I didn't see Nils was in the stream. Oh, there he is. Okay. Saturday I played a crazy over the board game, defended like a GM, and I finally had a good position. Decided to hang a knight. Ah. Oh. Who's Alex Hill? I wanted to join, but do not have enough right rated rapid games. Could you change the entry condition? I cannot change it now, Alex, because I already started the tournament. Um, yeah, I don't want to restart it, man. But you got to get the rapid games together. How many do you have? It shouldn't take you that long to play the faster rapid games. Quickly play 20 games. Just resign. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. I, I don't want to restart the tournament now that a whole lot of people have already entered. We're starting in seven minutes. I'm sorry. Um, how many games do you have, Alex, as far as rapid chess? Okay, guys. What else is new? Um, all that matters in the chessboard is good moves. I just had a funny thought, but I can't share it with you because it is is not really politically correct. All right, so Neil says I'll submit the game for Thursday. Yaps, yeah, if I <laughs> if you take an hour analyzing it. Um, all right, Alex, another time. You did play many casual rapid games. Try to play some rated games. I switch it up every week, so. Within two weeks, if you play 20 games, you can play. But I like to weed out the, the trolls. Um, all the fuss about the last draw. Yeah, this is exactly what I said, Mule Skinner. This is exactly what I said. A lot of people are bitching and moaning about Carlson taking a draw in a better position. Um, but honestly, it, it was very clear to me from, from the early going in this match that Magnus seemed to want to draw every single game. I would say that was his game plan. You know, could it have to do with the fact that, like, last match, what happened with Karyakin? I think the last match with Karyakin could very much have affected Magnus's mind mindset. You know, the accident where he, like, went behind and had to catch up. And, it, I mean, he was kind of like, I'm not going to do that again. You know, I'm not going to, like, get myself in a hole. I can beat this guy. I can beat this punk in rap chess easily. Why am I going to get myself in a hole in the classical match? I don't know. It just, it just, you felt like... It was Carlson's game plan to just draw and then beat him in the rapid playoff. I don't know. Maybe Magnus secretly like bet on himself to like tie the match or something. I don't know. You know, there's all kinds of conspiracy theories you could come up with. Um, I I just don't think the prizes are enough. You know, I wonder how much betting goes on on chess. The game was minus two. What? Minus two. What do you mean, minus two? Acerbate is here. Join the tournament, Acerbate. 
So what are you talking about minus two? Maybe with like chess master one thousand. It was like negative point eight. At some point he takes up. I don't know about some point. I'm just talking about like the final position. Like I don't know. I didn't see when it was plus two for anybody, but um. But the question is taking the draw in the, in the last position where it was like plus 0.7 or something like that. Um, and also that's the computer. I mean, he may not have seen the same lines. But I, I really agree with, with Mule Skinner on this. Yes, I mean, most likely he was better. But still, he reached his goal. He played 50 games in a row to get to play. What? What do you mean 50 games in a row? What are you talking about, Asperate? Chess is all hyped up today. Minus 1.1. I mean, I don't know. I don't know about any minus 2. It may just depend on, on what you what you were looking at, but... Alright. I think that like a, a chess game where someone is like minus 1 or something happens in a lot of Grandmaster games. And half the time, like, nobody wins those games. I mean, being like a pawn up is not a guarantee at any point, you know, you're going to win. I don't know who I support. I actually never used to like Magnus, but I almost feel like for some reason I started rooting for him. I started to to appreciate him a little bit more. I used to kind of like not really care for Magnus, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I just think he's still, I just, I guess I want the strongest player to be world champion. I still feel like Caruana isn't better than Carlsen, so somehow I just, you know what I mean? I just don't think that we should have a different world champion unless they can really prove themselves the better player. And that's not the case. Um, all right. Well, I mean, if you really pay attention to the way that Magnus has played, you know, in the last years, um, I call him like the greatest practical chess player of all time. He, he doesn't play exciting chess really most of the time. So I don't know what you expect, but as far as being the greatest practical player in the world, there is no question. Um, I mean, he, you know, he's not like the the classic chess genius. You know what I mean? It's not like this this brilliancy prize games like Tal or something. He's just really good at everything and really good technically, especially. Um, all right. Let's let's play. It's going to be 7 plus 2. Fun. Cormoran will be a tough opponent. Jacob's tough too. Jacob Morales, his signals did really well last week, so be careful with him. I think he's a little underrated. Mule Skinner is tough. Haven't seen Azawaga in a long time. So only 10 players, no 12 so far. Yeah, he's absolutely grinder. And he is Capablanca like. I agree, Antonio. There's there's definitely parallels with Capablanca um, with, with Carlson and, and um, who else? Like a little bit of like Lasker or something. Um, if you had to pick a world champion who Carlson was most like, you know, Capablanca would probably be the one. Candela was going to play, but they left. No, maybe he'll be back. There he is. So, Candela has played in my simuls a lot. Passpaw99, good to see you back. Thank you guys for subscribing, by the way, before we get started. Please support the stream. Dim has donated 400 bits this week. Merle Dixon with 100. Astro Bay watching commercials. He's donated 6. Alright, I'm ready to play. I'm going to just drink my beer, enjoy, kick back, relax. I'm not going to stress about the the argument about whether Magnus should try to win the, 20, the 12th game. Here's the tournament link. Let me grab it for you guys. Chess world thing, Polgar. Oh, the chess chess world. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to support like shadow shadow chess organizations, so I wouldn't ever do that. But that's cool that it worked out for you. Um, Yudit is good. I mean, she's not really experienced as a commentator that much. I mean, like I would have like way more experience than her, but um, she's just such a strong player. It doesn't even really matter. She's probably doing a good job, and. Um, yeah. 
Well, yeah, hopefully you get your money's worth if you support the chess... What's it called? World Chess. Not the Chess World. Chess World sells, like, DVDs and stuff. World Chess. Shadow Chess, it should be called. Alright, so Cormoran... I typed in here, good luck all body. My son, whose English is slowly developing, he's only eight, and he speaks two languages. He invented this word, I thought it was really funny. Like, he didn't know all body. So, one day he said, I mean, he didn't know everybody, so one day he said all body. <laughs> I thought it was great, it was a great, like, made up word, you know, so I started using it. All body. Good luck, all body. All right, so we got Black playing the King's Indian here. You managed to get some cash. Um, why was I thinking of Romania and you the other day? I don't know. My family will, not me, but my other extended family, my kids and my wife will probably go back to Romania for, for the Christmas holiday season. All right, here we go. Dim with 100 bits. He's donated 500 this week. I appreciate you guys. Even if you can't support the stream, just being faithful to the stream and hanging out with us and giving us some input and just participating. You know, if you can't support the stream financially, it's never late. Those are hard times after all. It's never late. So Dim has really been great. Um, Merle Dixon, Acerbate, Nils. We've had donations from a lot of people. Um, you guys can also donate in the Streamlabs to have that, that donation, like Acerbate and Fish Rat Cow in the main stream there. And you can always donate via PayPal if you want to support my stream and help keep it going. And the most important thing is subscribe. Rook E8, that's interesting. Can't remember anyone playing Rook E8 like in that position before against me. Cormoran is a practical player. It's my first game today. I wanted to play some warm-up games, but but then I didn't have much time. Suddenly the stream was about to start, and I was like, ah, 5-0 is not the same, so I just decided, screw it. I'll just play. With the, with the Blitz chest, with the 5 too, it's harder for me to kind of wake up before the game start, but um, with 7 plus 2, I've got enough time that uh, I'm not not as hard hit by not being warmed up. Dim says guests can't play at the arena if I am banned, right? What? You're banned? Banned from playing. That's strange. All right, what do we got here? E5. Oh my god. Because you aborted three games in a row? Well, that's different from being banned. Like, what happens when you do that? Oh, that sucks. Banned, I mean, I know you're probably not a first language English speaker, but I mean, banned implies like permanently. So, yeah, 24 hours would be not a ban, but it would be a, like you're, you're timed out or something. Um, E5, yeah, that sucks. He's on timeout. You should tell Lee Chess administrators that modern psychologists think the timeout is, is, uh, it's old and should be done away with. It's like spanking. Corporal punishment. The timeouts are just old school. They should do away with that. All right, let's do this. Bishop H4. I'm sorry for that, Dim. Well, I mean, sometimes you know you gotta you gotta lay down the to abort the games. I mean, sometimes you just need to abort games because something came up. Three in a row is a little weird. It's kind of a harsh punishment, actually. That seems a little too harsh. I mean, 24 hours. Seriously. I mean, like an hour would be enough. That's weird. That's like too, too much. Yeah, I definitely don't agree with that. I also don't, I'm not sure if I should play a5 here. 
Well, sometimes you have to abort games, you know? Like, you get paired with this guy who you know is a computer. And you're just like, no, nope, I'm not going to play him. Then the next game, like, you're, you know, you're paired with somebody, but the doorbell rings, you know, or something like that. And <laughs> can it happen, like, three times if some strange circumstance comes up? You just keep aborting games because you don't like your opponent's profile. No, I don't know. I just think the punishment doesn't fit the crime. The punishment is too strict. Okay. This is getting weird now. Original, and we come to expect that from Cormoran, the original approach. Never faced anything exactly quite like this before. <sighs> All right. All right, mister. You're going to do something crazy? Mr. Crazy. I think that I went too far with A5. Like, that was greedy. I didn't need to, to do that. I think, you know, when you abort too many games, um, it should be like, you know, you're banned or whatever you want to call it, timed out for a duration like something normal, an hour. Okay, this is a really amazingly creative solution by Black here. So now we're just stuck in this crazy situation. I can't take. I don't want to let him take my other bishop. I'm just stuck. The position is insanely close. But it's hard for both sides to do anything. I think my plan is like king d1, king c1 at this point. Um, we can walk, we can do like a Korchnoi king walk or something like that. They should penalize your rating points and the story. Well, that's another thing that I don't completely agree with. I don't think that when you lose games without playing, when you time out, by the way, um, let's say I get paired in a tournament the last round of the tournament and there's two minutes left and I didn't see the game and I get timed out and I lose 50 rating points to like somebody who's 1200 you know what happens then is that the rating system becomes like basically the rating system becomes flawed I mean it becomes inflated artificially and I just don't think that should be the case Hmm. Getting weird around here. It's getting weirder and weirder by the minute. Somehow Cormoran is luring me into making crazy moves that I normally wouldn't play. All right. Wow. It's just getting strange. Strangers in the night. This guy doesn't go backward. Have you noticed that? That like he puts a piece on a square and they never have to leave. Even if they're hanging like the knight on f4, it's there forever. It's quite a creative player. Ancient gamer. Um, no, so my point was when games aren't played, like when new moves are played in the game by one player, like if I just forfeit on time without moving the pieces, um, I think there's an argument to make the case that maybe I, you know, maybe I shouldn't be charged rating points. I should forfeit in the tournament or whatever. Um, then again, maybe there, there are arguments that if I did that, I could exploit the system. I don't know.
All right. I feel like I'm playing the Leningrad Nimzo. Oh no. Now he found a new plan. Like, I literally have no idea where to put my king. Every time I think I found the right place for it, like, he starts attacking me on that side. It's really freaky. <laughs> All right. Um, I mean, can this get any weirder? Like, literally? It's like a conventional King's Indian again. My God. It's even like anticipating my moves. My knight on a5 is really, really helping out here. I mean, that's huge. Should have done this like ages ago, probably. Whoa. Oh, I had a hallucination. Well, my rooks were doubled. Damn, dude, what a fighter. He's 1700 in classical. Okay. <laughs> Now he's defending. What is going on here? I have no idea what's going on. Just intuitively sacking the exchange. What is happening here?
completely, completely confused. Oh my god, I just hallucinated. Wow, okay. Good game. That was a waste of time for me. Wow, what, an, what a great game by Black. I thought I was fine there at the end. Wow, he just defended with everything. Here. He's just winning. He's not winning. God, I had to play king takes h4. But that's almost impossible to find. This is okay, too. Wow. He found only move. Now I have to play knight e4, which I almost played. Oh, man. That sucks. <laughs> I just dropped a piece. Oh, my God. What a game. Yeah, Cormoran. He's pretty strong. Wow, that guy is amazing. Don't know too much about him, but that's only the third time he's beaten me. His ratings seem weird. He's like 2000, 2000 in Blitz and 1700 Classical. I don't understand what that's about. Um, that makes me look bad, Cormoran, you know, when you beat me like that. Um, all right, let's. That's pretty, pretty bad. I'm going to have to start berserking. The last time I did this, it was really bad, but I really have to, I really have to go. After losing the first round, I'm just basically screwed. And whenever I play fast, it seems to make the other players play fast. So you try to berserk and then you just play fast. So you never have a chance to actually win on time. You're 2,500 in Blitz. All right. I have no idea about chess 24 ratings. To be honest. Wow, this is pretty good. Van Urk, 1,700. <laughs> He's fifteen. Come on, dude. He's already too good. No, I don't know about this pawn sacrifice. It's interesting, but... It's the worst time control for berserking, but I need the points. 
I normally don't do this, but it's a short arena. <laughs> Not so many games we can get in with 7 plus 2. Losing the first round is devastating. You know, I'm, I'm, I, hate, I hate the whole arena system, to be honest. Queen d2, it's like he wanted to play rook d1. That's it. I, I had the feeling. Okay. All right. I mean, I don't like giving up my bishop, but I'm going to keep that pawn in another one. So we'll be materialistic. What can I do? I mean, if I get the pawn back, it's like a major sort of psychological victory for white. Well, he's not a materialist. Most people are, are are materialistic, though. You know, especially around this rating that he is 1,700. Asterbe, you're not materialistic. I think that for people below, like, expert or, let's say, candidate master, whatever you want to call it, 2,000 level, one of the biggest weaknesses is, is being materialistic. And uh, Van Erk definitely doesn't have that problem. He sacrificed two pawns already. Um... Right there, positional move, positional player. Positional move for a positional player. He sacks two pawns and he starts maneuvering like Petrosian. Petrosian. Oh man, Cormoran. That was a pretty funny game. I don't think I played particularly well, but at the end of the day, um, I almost did. Okay, I can't spend too much time here, obviously. Queen f4, massaging my position. Yeah, but truthfully, I think you were, I don't know, I thought you were better. I just thought, I don't know why, I just dropped a piece. I just thought it was like protected or something. Oh, uh, now I guess I should fix my pawn structure here. We're two pawns up. I'm notoriously vulnerable in the early games in my streams. Is this kind of passive? Yes. A little bit. Who's that? Queen Savage. Look at this guy with the positional maneuvers. Two pawns down. He's got the funny subtle maneuvering with the queen. Doesn't make too many pawn moves. All right, maybe I should have played Queen E6. <laughs> Speak of the devil. Uh, he overlooked the tactic, but might be kind of risky to win that exchange. Actually, yeah, I'm not gonna do that. I mean, you don't need to win the exchange when you're up two pawns. That's the moral of the story. If I give up my dark square bishop, I have nothing to protect my king, really. Hopefully he's bad at blitz. He does seem pretty good, though. You know, two pawns down. Making my life difficult. Goodness. Subtle. Position
positionally, he's pretty good. Too generous with his pawns in the early stage. Solid for 1700. This was a bad mistake. We made a terrible positional mistake weakening f4. His first really bad strategic mistake. Now it should be a walk in the park, essentially. setting that up. Yeah. Not warmed up yet. There's a maiden one coming. All right. I almost didn't see it. Morales up there. And Bon Carlson, 18. It's an established account, good. What's up with Cormoran? Bombus is here after a very long time. Thanks guys for joining me for this arena. Got off to a bad start, lost to Cormoran. Cormoran's I'm ahead of him now. He's Yeah. He's behind me. Alright, Morales. Oh, not black again. No, I will not play the Sicilian. I'm afraid to play the Sicilian against him. Anything but that stupid Grand Prix attack. I have nightmares about that. He plays this seriously. Thanks, guys, for joining me for my arena tournament. I've got an hour and a half left. Chess Pondas hanging out with us. Knight c3. That looks like a good move. So, right. Knight c3 seems correct. Correct. I'm playing it like a classic... Um, classic what? Not sure what I'm supposed to do here. Seems to have this all worked out. Morales is just getting really strong. He beat me a couple times lately. The results have been getting better and better. What am I supposed to do here? Something original, I don't know. Original. Just making it up. I'm not berserking again. Against someone 1700. He's been doing so well against me. Look. In the last times, he had a lot of zeros there. Zero, 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 zero. But lately, it's been the opposite. So the G4, man, that's totally random. But the rest of his position makes sense. Position. Burning your bridges behind you. Thanks to our moderator, JCS, for being here. Who's also, I think, playing in the tournament. Soltigo. I don't know what's up with him. Former and current moderator. Knight B5. Alright, well, you forced me to do this.
nothing to think about. Oh no, he dropped a piece. Yes. Yes. Caught him out of his element. The oldest trick in the book. If you play in like a chess cafe or something, that's like the number one way I won pieces in like blitz games for money and stuff. But it's usually a Sicilian, Morales. Oh no. He just dropped a piece. Nothing but the whole piece. What bishop takes a, bishop takes a4, bishop takes e3. I can also play queen b6. Alright, I guess I'll take this. Take on b5, take on d with d2 with check. I'm alright, I'm alright. Of a piece in the end game. He's not giving up. I would just resign, Antonio, and save your energy for the next game. Back to the tournament. We got a streak starter. We're in first place. To the bad start. We gambled with the. We gambled with the. Uh, the berserk, and uh, it paid off. Got a lucky win there. No pint. I just finished my pint here. All right, we'll, we'll decide whether to berserk only, you know, for special occasions. All right, we, how many players we have? 27 players. Come on, guys, subscribe Subscribe to the channel. Please support the stream if you can with donations. Dim today donated 100. Let's get a bit battle going on. For the tournament, Jacob is oh, no, another tough player. Why do I have to keep playing the, the strongest players? I'm kind of glad to see a D4 game. I'm getting all E4 lately. I should really play some King's Indian to kind of mix it up. Oh. Alright. Yeah. G3. Anyway, good luck everyone. All body. I think that Jacob Surratt knows more theory than I do in, in most openings. This seems like a weird move to play, but I guess it's not bad, d6. Actually, it's not weird. I think this is like a... I think I played this once. Um, Taimanov or someone used to play this. Problem is my bishop can get trapped, so I have to be careful. Dim donated another 100 bits. Somebody's got to help Dim out. He can't do a bit battle by himself. Knight on BD7. And then... You go somewhere, I play like E5. Yeah, but then my bishop just straight out trapped. So Knight BD7 is a problem. So, with this move order, if I play Knight on BD7, you're just playing Bishop G5. And then my bishop is trapped to play a4, which is just like losing. That's weird. So I guess I just have to trade bishops. Acerbate. He is a theory master. Um, Acerbate donated support to stream. Absolutely. Thank you, man. a5 is not such a bad move. I guess. I don't typically play this setup. Strange, though. Something strange about this. I feel like I was shortchanged or something, like a move. It's alright. It's a little bit passive for black. He more or less plays perfect openings. Which I think is amazing. I certainly, I'm, I'm probably weakest in the opening. Especially in chest 960. That's my my real big weakness. Chest 960 openings. 
So I'm surprised by d5 here. I mean, it's probably not a bad move. Thank you, Queen Savage. But, um... 1,000 ads for 500 bits. Acerbate is awesome. He's going to watch 1,000 ads for 500 bits. Seriously. D5 is, is committal. Committal. All right. Well, whatever. He doesn't think. He just moves. No brain, no pain. It's not a bad move for white. He just moves instantly every single move. That can be a good thing, but it can be a bad thing too. Looks like a pretty standard Bogo Indian. And he just goes there, which I did not expect. Knight d3. Very practical player. This game is going to take forever, man. My openings aren't really optimal for, for playing a lot of games quickly in an arena format. We've got to go Petrosian on it. <laughs> we're going, we're going Iron, Iron Tigran style. Prepare the evacuation slide, if necessary. Um, I remember I played this Canadian guy, Christian Stevens. He was like a Fide master. I don't know if he still plays, but um, he was a pretty good blitz player. But I remember we played a tournament game where he was playing the black side of Bogo. And he just evacuated. And everything was fine. You know, he just literally evacuated and it was just walk away. You know, no problem. I can already prepare the evacuation slide. We're just walking away. There's nothing you can do about it. Absolutely. So you have a white square bishop. Which is hard to attack with. Now he's copying me to be like a show off or something. But I don't, you know, I don't think that matters. <laughs> he copies me. You don't need to evacuate. You have more space. It's going to be hard to push that pawn through g5 without sacrificing something. He may just have a kind of fortress, though, you know. It, it may be impossible for me to break through. I'm not I'm not saying I was trying to necessarily win here. First of all, I want to defend myself. Now, I don't see how he protects that. Oh, he's got that. Only choice. It may just be impossible to break through. I have one idea. I had this game dozens of times, really. Oh my god, that's kind of scary. <laughs> he said he's had this game dozens of times. That's frightening, dude. Mate. No.
That's truly frightening. If you're going to do something like sack the exchange, I'm, I'm definitely trading queens. Now you can do your exchange sack. Because I'm not buying it. Faster than me, stronger than me. Okay, draw. It's impossible to break through. It's just a fortress. It's undefeated. I'm not going to waste my time there. All right, that's just the po the problem with that opening. If you play like Petrosian, like you have to take a draw if the other guy doesn't want to take any risks. It's just a fortress. Um, where's all this chess coming from? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not better there. So Morales is playing uh, one of his Grand Prix attacks. How come he's playing with his bishop on c4? Bauhaus. I love the... I love the goth band. Bauhaus. Goth rock. Remember when I went to college, like... In the early 90s. People, they used to hang out at this this dive bar in Boston called the Ratskeller. And bands like, they would listen to music from bands like Bauhaus. What am I playing here? Um, maybe a Marazzi after D4. I don't know what inspired me to play this. I just suddenly went D4. But now Black has a bad game after B6. I probably could have thought about Berserking here against an 1800, but I've never played him. Oh, I played him once. All right, I forgot. That's scary that you've played that um, JCS, but nothing like that. Like, maybe we played the BOGO before, but the position wasn't like that. You know, it was different. Like, this was the first time we ever had one of these where I had to run away. Um, no, I'm not sure you're better there. <laughs> you gave me a draw again. That's not the first time. JCS gives me draws sometimes, but I'm giving you a draw because you're a moderator. <laughs> Bishop d3. Okay, so it's it's acerbate. It's a kind of it's a kind of um, weird King's Indian slash check Benoni with a move b6 thrown in. What do you think, acerbate? So what do we do? Is it the King's Indian or is it is it the Czech Benoni? I had a game against um, International Master in Hungary. I remember where I played like G4 or something. It's really a little bit over the top. I try to do that. Oh man, I don't know about this though. Somebody needs to get me a, a lifeline to Dmitry Gurevich. <laughs> Someone who plays like the H3 Kings Indian. That's basically what this is. That'd be cool. That'd be a cool idea to turn like, you know, who wants to be a millionaire into chess. You could have like a lifeline in the middle of the game. You could call like your favorite grandmaster to get advice on one particular position. Um, you could take like a survey or whatever. Get the, the audience. Yeah, that's it. Get the audience to suggest a move. I think it's an awesome idea. Okay, Cormoran, thanks for taking me out and, and ruining my tournament. Have a great night. All right, so... Well, you can't really do the Benko Gambit, you know, in the Czech Benoni. So I'm going to let him, if he wants to do B5. So Mozart says that G4 with 92 and can really work in these positions. Yeah, maybe, now that I put my queen. I could put my queen here. Well, in the Roy Lopez, of course, that's normal. I mean, this is certainly not a Lopez. We know that. Um, 
I was toying around with the idea of castle and queen side. I mean, that's a normal check Benoni idea. Alright, let's do it. Let's go crazy. I don't have to castle queen side. By the way. Um, but I'm playing it like a straight up... I'm playing it like a straight up... Uh, yeah. Check Benoni. Hippo defense... XX Queen Savage is new here. Look at this, Queen E8. Now, that's not something I expected. They're trying to force through B5. Here's not a move. This is not a move I really intended on playing, but Black's in a kind of weird spot now. I prevented B5, but I'm not sure how I go forward from here. I actually intended on keeping my Knight on F3, but the other alternative... I guess I should just, yeah, I guess I should just castle queenside here. Let him play b5. That was the original plan. Now I, like, chickened out and changed my mind, which was stupid. The plan is to castle queenside. When he plays b5, you don't take it. And you might even go as far as to play, like, let him take on c4. So the the way I should have played it is to just castle queenside and go berserk against him. Like, right now. And instead I chickened out and played, I think I'm playing Astrobate's, like, secret account or something. Rook a7. Asterbate, what are you doing, man? You got a secret account? I decided to just totally wimp out here. Play it like a King's Indian. Now what am I going to do with my king? I'm walking around over here on F1. Now I'm going to walk back over here again? Wait. What was the first game? Wait, the first game I was talking about moving my king to D1 and C2? Against Cormoran? And the second game, I'm walking my king out? Did you see that? So in every game, I like don't castle and move my king around. That is crazy. Well, you can do knight f1, knight g3 now. A suggestion of the peanut gallery. Probably not a bad idea. Turning it into, essentially, turning it into like a kind of Roy Lopez Spanish game. Uh-oh. You see, now here's where the problems can start. He's going to get in f5 in a timely fashion. And, um... And then we just have to do the defensive thing, which sucks. And how I'm going to win on the queen side. So let's say, like, knight f1, f5, ef, gf, bishop f, bishop f, gf, rook f. I think we can do this. And then we just take on f5. We just take. Just keep taking. Always take. So Zlatko, <laughs> my friend Zlatko says, always take. We just keep taking when we play for the white squares. Now the structure is slightly better for black, but he's got the knight sleeping there, so... Uh-oh. Wait a minute, I have queen g4, which is really ominous. This is my third. I'm a. High Plains Gifter. <laughs> Stupid joke. Queen G4. High Plains Gifter. That's a great, a great sub name. Those are like space invaders. Humble life looks like space invaders. I'm a high plains gifter. Queen G4. Someone said hippo said Alexandria Princess. What's the least draw opening, generally speaking? So those are different comments. Alright, Alexandria Princess, welcome. The white squares. You've got some problems now. We have the Petrosian theme going on the last two games against the uh, against JCS, the defensive Petrosian theme, and now we've got the the E4 offensive Petrosian theme. <laughs> Guys, what's up? I'm not even paying attention. What's happening here? Morales is out ahead of me. Mule Skinner, Jacob are really close. A lot of players on 7. Alright, so we take here on G5. 
because we want to keep our strong knight if possible. Then we've got. Mm, gotta be careful. Rook f4. Rook f4. Check. And then grab his knight. I feel like it's better to just play a safe move here. I could just play knight g3, man. That's a safe move. I'd like to trade queens and leave that prisoner on g7. You're playing a 1200 plays better than me. Acerbate. Welcome to my life. I'm constantly asking, why do these 1600s play like masters? Um, so Bauhaus is, is being smart about not trading pieces when he's down material. He's down the exchange. He's down a lot of stuff here. very frustrating how do I break out here he's got the terrible bishop and I still can't can't get in it's gonna take a little while I mean I feel like I'm up a rook basically <laughs> Because of this, this bishop on g7. And I'm not up a rook. Can't play queen f5. Alright. Knight takes e6 was possible, Mozart. Yeah. There was something about it. I was like, well, I don't want to mess with it. Yeah, it was probably the best move. Usually when I think a long time on a move and I don't do it, it tends to end up being the best move. I was concerned about this, but I did see this. Only defense, but a good one. I mean, really, he should be dead, based on the fact that his bishop is non-existent. But he's still hanging on. It's really frustrating me. Some crazy defenses here. He could have played e4 there, actually sacrificing a pawn. That's his best move. e4, and then if I take, he plays bishop e5 with annoying threats. All right, Morales is in first place. No surprise there. He's been getting monstrous lately. So we got to finish this guy off. Come on. I'm glad I didn't berserk him. Guys, support the stream. Don't forget to check out my YouTube channel, Video Chess Training on YouTube. We do upload all the streams over there. Um, Wednesday, that is tomorrow... I've got uh, unusual openings in Blitz and Rapid Chess. That's the theme. We play stuff we don't normally play. All right. We're just barely ahead of Morales. Morales lost a game. Oh, to me, I forgot. All right. Morales just going through the rest of the field. Who's he beating down? Oh, he's got Cormoran he beat, and Candela he beat. Whoa, dude. He's got a 24-24 performance, even after losing to me. What is going on with you? Your bits aren't ready. I'm coming back. There is like a bit sale going on, isn't there? For Black Friday? And the holidays? Guys, thank you for... Acerbate donated another four bits. He's mining bits. And he, he went and got more bits. So the Queen Savage donated more bits. Now Queen Savage is up to third place for the week. With 30 bits donated, taking Acerbate out. 
Thank you guys for supporting us. Stooks. All right, I should really, based on Stooks' rating, Stook, sorry. Well, I call him Stooks. Stook. I should really be berserking here. Now, you see the 1200 who beat Astrobate? Sharpen the play, I say, when you don't have time and there's no time for positional thoughts. I lost to John Shaw. I don't usually play this move order. I lost to the Scottish I am John Shaw. I guess he's a GM now. It was an IM at the time. Knight C6 is a strong move. Or is it? Am I supposed to take on D5 there? Whoops. All right. Good to know. Kind of a sharp line. Oh, no. This is a blunder. You have to play E6, and then if if uh, if E3, you're threatening Knight B4. Now he, he does this doesn't work, because I have check. The right idea, but the wrong execution. You're supposed to play e6, and that that way the bishop would protect b4, not g6. Probably he's trying to play like the Grunfeld or some sort of Grunfeld type of setup. With d5 and g6. No spamming allowed. Mubot laying down the 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 hammer of doom. But Stuck is is gone now. We were lucky. He dropped a piece the same way Morales did earlier. Be careful with the Mubot. Sorry about that, <laughs> Queen Savage. But he keeps it keeps the trolls under control. Sometimes innocent people get caught in the in the Mubot grinder. Um, i actually there's a new Mubot. I have to try the beta for that. I know that a lot of other streamers use different bots, like Nightbot or whatever. This is the only one I've used. All right, guys, come on, bring it. I'm all out of coffee and beer. What am I going to do? I'm going to drink water. I'm reduced to water drinking. Oh, no. Stook lost everything. But did Stook play Astrobate? Is that the 1200 who beat him? What's he talking about? Mate. Alright. So that was a good pairing. We got one of the lower rated players. Took him out quickly. And we got the lead now. But we did have a, a bunch of strong players in a row. In the beginning, honestly. So we had a pretty tough pretty tough run there. We were rewarded with one lower rated player. I played Cormoran, Morales, Jacob. Well, technically not. I mean, Van Erk and Bauhaus weren't that high rated. So I only had three of the top players thus far, so it wasn't that tough. Um, no, it was a different guy, Elswaf. Wasn't Elswaf? No, but the thing is, Elswaf, I thought he was like one of the higher rateds. Oh, there's Elswaf. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll check out the game later. Um, Alright, so Chestosterone is here. Turkey Farm. He's playing the featured game, no problem at all. We've got 33 players in the tournament, 47 viewers. Guys, I know the World Championship is tomorrow. Do you guys know the time? Is it the same time? Is anybody sure about the tiebreak time? Is it the same as usual, the way it's been, 10 a.m. Eastern time, which would be, what, um, 10 plus 5 is like 3 p.m. GMT? No, but I mean, Stook, you played, you know, you played G6. It's just, you have a good move there, E6, and your opening is fine. Morales again. This time I have white. All right, let's play white. All right, let's not let him play the, the Budapest Gambit with knight F3. I forget, he plays d6 or something? Or g6? What does he do? He tries to play d6. Oh, g6, okay. He tries, just, he's playing the King's Indian, basically. Or Grunfeld. Alright, Morales. We've avoided his Budapest Gambit, making him play an alternate. His alternate d4 defense. Why would I want to prevent the Budapest? 
Well, he knows it pretty well, and we've had a history with that. So, you know, he's he kind of knows the variations that I play, and I feel like I have a bigger edge in other things. Queen a5, interesting move. A very sharp move, actually. So I feel like I have a bigger edge taking him into something that he, he doesn't play as frequently. It's not like the Budapest is a great opening. Um, but I want him out of his comfort zone. I feel like my advantage is greater. He says it goes well for him. I don't know about our score being good for you in the Budapest. But it's a hard, it's a lot of work, I feel like, when someone's well prepared. He's, he's a player who, like some of our other viewers, plays very well in positions he's especially familiar with. Um, I think that's one of my operating theses about chess openings in general. I try to play things that... Now he's playing this king's at the end very sharply. Very incisively. I don't know if this is theory. I never had a strong player play this line against me. But I play this line fairly frequently that someone could try to prepare something. I should have probably played something different, but the move order on the first move, rather the second move, with knight f3, I couldn't play f3. I like to play the same-ish against the Benoni Kings Indian too. I also play the classical Kings Indian, but that's a real grind. Not something I like to do in, in fast chess. I wouldn't mind playing classical Kings Indians when I have a lot of time, like a long, long game. You know, but Kings Indians and Blitz are tough. That's how I lost to Cormoran in the first game. A really complicated Kings Indian. Alright, so. That's an interesting moment. Now, should I play E4? You can't sacrifice a piece or anything. Why shouldn't I play E4? He just goes in and plays b5. Okay. I mean, I had a similar game like this, very similar game to this with Feingold, where I was like clearly better or just better, and I offered him a draw because I, I had to go. But I was like a pawn up, and I had another game with international master Eric Kislik. Where I also got a good position when people did this. So I haven't been overly impressed by this gambit thing. This is a little bit different. You know, the two people that have played this type of thing have not done well against me. Kishlik lost and 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 Feingold was was worse. Feingold was like, I don't know why I did that pawn sacrifice. <laughs> That's what he said after the game. He was like, I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I think there are some lines where you can do this, though. It wasn't this exact position. I don't think Ben played g5. He, he tried to do it. Kislik as well. They tried to do it with, without playing g5, basically. I did, you know, I did have many games in this, in this opening. Um, I can't remember them all. But, okay. I mean, I think holding the b5 square like this in any kind of Benko is um, is a really big, big thing. For white, that is. You beat him in 10 second chess. And I have a couple draws with Feingold. I mean, Feingold, I was lucky I was white. Both the games we played, um, so... I've never had to face him with black. We had one kind of boring draw in a Slav, and then and then there was the King's Indian. So I'm sure Ben Ben would have the edge if he were white against me. Theoretically. All right, now knight to g4. 
Come on, just drop a piece. I have no idea where he's going. We're just sending you back. I had a game in the Budapest Spring Open. Um, I don't know if it's called the Budapest Spring Open or Hungarian Spring Open, but the Spring Open in Budapest with a kid who did something similar. <laughs> he like put his knight in g4, then had to put it on e5, and it wasn't really... Yeah, this isn't really good for black, I don't think. We don't really need our bishop. Yeah, and his structure is just crushed. Whoa. All right, I think we have to take that, probably. I don't want him to play f4, but his pawn structure is, is just grotesque here. <sighs> He's still good, just a bit weak for a GM. <laughs> I'm a bit weak for an IM, according to some people. Uh-oh, I just hung the exchange. You see what I'm talking about? And yeah, now it's going to be a struggle, but I think I have good compensation. By rating, I'm, I'm weak for an IM. But I was much, much higher rated at my peak. Now, I have good comp here. I walked right into the knight c2 like a bunny. <laughs> Whatever. All right. Your king is open, mine is not. I've got two pawns for the exchange. Outside pawn, powerful bishop on b5. His rooks aren't so good. My remaining pieces are very active. Um, yeah, so I think we're in good shape here. How about bishop c4 with the idea of knight b5? Universal plan. What's up, everybody? Thanks for supporting the stream. Dim this week, Merle Dixon, Queen Savage. You can also make a donation via PayPal. I really appreciate it if you do. King H7. King H7. All right, and this has got to be winning. King position is not to be toyed with. Safe, king safety. Let's say king safety. I dropped the exchange, but I managed to maintain enough of the position to successfully mount to come back. Now I'm a former I'm a former sort of associate of ironically I'm a, a former associate of of Grandmaster Roman Jinjiashvili. I wouldn't call it I wouldn't call myself his protege, but we were very close at one point. A little too close. <laughs> We were a little too close, and then we had to move move away from each other. Um, Roman. Last time we were 
communicating with with four letter capitals but um but he did help me a lot somebody's out of here oh queen savage says bye okay we'll see you later thank you for supporting the stream you won versus 2200 all right what's up man he resigned morales not having luck there we lost our first game we're mounting a comeback 49 minutes lots of time left in this tournament though acerbates in second place <laughs> just kidding acerbate where are you Acerbate for top 10. Mule Skinner. I'm getting the Spanish contingent. The Spanish torture. We had two games with Morales, now Mule Skinner. Though Mule Skinner is not a real Spaniard. The Benko. Oh, you're playing versus Morales now? Oh, Chompito. I thought you I thought you were Acerbate. All right, what are we going to do here? Um, I can't remember. It's been too long since I remember playing with Mule Skinner. We have 183 games. He's not running well at the moment. Morales was running pretty hot against me, but um, Mule Skinner not. Guys, thank you for subscribing. That's the best way you can support the stream. Of course, million dollar donations are good, but D6, yes, okay. So, winning seems to me be like poison to you. What, winning is bad? Like if you win a game, then you lose a whole bunch or something? Is that what you're saying? Don't feed my mind. I had this weird dream last night that I had some kind of strange disease and there were like, there was like a rat inside my body or something. It was very strange. We've had on the stream a couple of incidences where, where there was this like chewing sound um, in the woodwork, like in the attic or something. And now I'm getting dreams about about rats in my body. It's, uh, it's not good. Don't give me any more health fears, acerbate, poison. Night F3. You got discouraged for no reason. This guy was a bit suspicious. I absolutely, Acerbate. Don't be sub dis discouraged because you lost to a guy who's rated 1,200. He probably has, like, a provisional rating and, like, his brother is playing on the account, you know? He's he's 1,200, but his brother is 1,800, you know? I mean, there's nothing to stop people from doing that a lot. Shirov smashing people with the late 90s? Shirov, um... Wait a minute. Well, everything I do is from the late 90s. <laughs> but um, queen takes b6. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of the ways to play. The main way, actually. Um, when you say Shira was smashing people with it, didn't Shira play the Benko with black as well? Now that I, now that I think about it. But this line was very trendy in the late 90s. Ivan Sokolov. I have a very key game that, that Sokolov played that I follow, have followed and mentioned before. That was annotated in some chess informant 20 years ago. I mean, the theory is obviously probably moved on, but I get this position very commonly. This is my game with Alexander Vojkovic from a rapid tournament. Um, my old friend who passed away some years back, Alec, uh, and I had a game that went queen c7, bishop f4, knight b6, 93. And that's the theory that Ivan Sokolov recommends. And the line continues from there. But Wojciech had an interesting idea that like hasn't been played hardly at all. Um, he just crushed me in this rapid tournament. I was really mad at him. It was like in Boston, and... It was like $100 for first place for this tournament. And, and I'm like, this is mine. It's in the bag. Like a four-round rapid tournament. No big deal to be like one other master. And I'm like getting ready to, to go into the building. And Wojkovic is like pulling up in his car. I'm like, what are you doing? There's like $100 for first place. What did you do? Like drive here from, from Maryland? 
He was like, no, I was in, in New York. I just felt like, oh, I, I played some tournament. Oh, my God, man. <laughs> Drive here to take away my $100. Um, okay, bishop f4 now, knight b6, knight e3, and then the Wojciewicz move is bishop d7, which uh, which actually I could find like maybe one other instance where that had actually been played. Um a big mistake that White can make is like to say, say we have this position and White had already castled instead of playing like, I don't know, Bishop F4, then I'm screwed. I had a simul game that went that way where I castled instead of Bishop F4, Black plays Knight B6, and then I had to do like Knight E3 in front of my Bishop on C1. And there's no way to like harmonize White's entire position. This is this is critical. Now Bishop D7 is, is what Wojo played and he crushed me because I just was not ignorant to what he was trying to do. Um, I think there's actually like a Hungarian game in the, in the chess, the chess opening explorer with bishop d7 castles, bishop b5. I'm not sure. Maybe there's no games, but that's his idea. Bishop d7 castles, bishop b5. He sacked the pawn, and in all lines, it's like good for black. It's just like advantage to black after that. So you have to play a4 to stop it. I've had some blitz games um, along these lines. Now black played knight d7, which I don't, you know, I don't think I understand what that does. He's not completing his development. He doesn't have really a plan with knight, knight fd7. f5 I'm not afraid of, especially with this guy um, on e3. I mean, it, it looks like he's trying to play, I guess, f5. The obvious, excuse me, the obvious plan is Bishop g3. It is kind of a pity to take the bishop off this diagonal, which was what I would intend on playing like queen d2, but I'm not going to be doing that with the bishop on f4. Spectacular camel, how thoughtful. What was thoughtful? Um, this line is really dangerous. What, what are you talking about, spectacular camel? That, that line that I'm talking about, yeah, I mean, not too many people know about that. You know, that's, I don't know where Wojtkiewicz came up with it, but he played a lot of games with G6. You know, this was his, this was his kind of tricky repertoire with black. Wojo played a lot of kind of sketchy stuff with the black pieces, and, and the typically, it would take someone of a very high positional order to take him out. Um, a lot of weird modern defenses and stuff. Oh, the GM taking the prize money. Yeah, well... <laughs> It was it was harsh. Well, he had to beat me, and he had to teach me something in the process, which was good. He taught me a very important lesson in this Benko line. Bishop d4. And I'm liking this for white. I'm starting to have like strange hallucinations. We have a solid time advantage. His Nunes is doing well again. He's in third place. Last time he finished in the top three as well. Uh-oh. Knight f6. This is getting stranger now by the minute. I don't like that move too much. That's extremely awkward. What am I supposed to play? Like knight ed1? Seriously. Doesn't seem right. He's going to take on c3, then take on e4. Just destroy my entire position. Man, that's rough. Bishop f3, the other possibility. I guess there's bishop takes f3. Bishop f3 takes e3, knight c4. I can sack a pawn there. I don't mind that too much. Turn out to be school money. <laughs> it wouldn't have hurt so much if it wasn't my friend. That's a lot of money. I mean, his gas money to drive from Boston to New York was probably like 20 bucks or something. You know, at the end of the day, after paying for lunch, he probably had like a $70 profit and the four hour commute. No, it's like more than that. It's got to be like four hours to drive from New York to Boston and then back. So it's more than, it's like $30 in gas money plus. <laughs> Plus he has to drive for like eight hours. 
So, so he makes seventy dollars. He's getting paid like eight dollars an hour to drive from Boston to New York and back. He's basically a taxi driver. Uh oh. All that mule skinner for nothing. The knight is trapped on B two. Unless you want to sack your queen or something. We've got this brutal e5 threat now. So I don't get it. Isn't the knight just trapped? I don't think there's any tricks. I mean, he has queen b7 or something, and then he sacks his queen. I've even got rook f2. Ouch. So he literally has no defense. No fence or defense. He has a he has a fence. The fence doesn't work. <laughs> so Frick takes B2. You're having the same hallucination I had for an instant. He just lost a piece. He just lost his mind. Yep, it's not looking too good. He's two pieces down. And counting. Alright. Alright, well, it's a good thing Cormoran left, because he's the only one who could beat me today. And now we got to draw with Jacob. Jacob lost a game to somebody. Wow. Loose. Laos. Rated 1,600. Laos is two draws and two wins. Very solid. He's got a 2165 performance from a 1,600 rating. Hmm. That's a little, that rating's a little bit loose, <laughs> if you ask me. Something suspicious about Luce's rating. Very, very solid performance. I hope I don't get paired with him. So, Jacob and Morales and Hissitnuntz. Champa. Champa also outperforming his rating. He's 1700 playing 2170. Losing only against Mule Skinner. Guys, don't forget, tomorrow's Weird Wednesday, 12 noon stream, with the pandas, unusual openings. Hello, come and join us for some unusual openings tomorrow. What are you doing? You don't have a British accent. It sounded weird. All right. Anyway, we like to mess around here. All right, we need more girls and skimpy clothes and stuff like that, but we have the pandas instead, which is cool. Close enough. Can't have everything. 48 viewers. All right. Wharfman. Wharfman, I don't know you. Oh, I did play you once. Okay. But I still don't feel I really know you. Look at that. I barely won. That that looks like a close game. Um, all right. Let's try the weird... In honor of one of our subscribers, Yobatis, the spectacular camel, I'm going to play A6. This looks familiar. Well, you can also play e6, of course, transposing to some sort of normal con Sicilian, but b5 seems a bit more. Wow, this is really weird. Yabatis, look at this. Yabatis had the same game today, and we looked at it. I actually watched him play it today. That's so strange. The same move a3. I actually recorded. Some commentary about this. So that guy played awesome. Don't get down, Acerbate. We're going to work on it. So D3, solid move. I think Yabatis' opponent played sharper with like D4. Yabatis's. That sounds strange to say. Yabatis's. I'd like to, to just thank everybody for joining me, having fun today. Tomorrow, forget about the World Championship, just watch my stream. My stream is at 12 noon tomorrow, so we're going to be over overlapping with the World Championship. Maybe we'll, we'll stop and, and take some breaks to check it out. You know, in some cases I might not be inclined to make this exchange of pieces, but it's an undeveloped bishop for a dark square bishop that actually... 
might be his good bishop. I mean, let's just develop some pieces. I could also take with the queen. Wolfman's pretty solid here, though. I'm not that inspired by my position. I'm also not that used to playing a6. Try to get active here with a sharp move f5. Not without its little share of risk, perhaps. I think it's justified. And now we target this pawn on, on e5. Target pawn. Easier said than done. This piece clearly needs to be developed. We can surround surround that pawn, though, pretty obviously. That's the plan. Don't get down with the 900 performance acerbate. Don't get depressed. Get revenge. All right, what are we doing here? Rook e1, good move. Oh, he's defending well. Think a lot. Think about all you got. That's what he's doing. He's thinking about all he's got here. Now, I might have to bust the d6 break. I don't know what I'm going to do. If we play like rook a e8 and then bust the d6 break, I mean, that's a way to play. The other possibility is knight to d4. Another possibility is my other brother. Knight f4. Where am I going after that? Alright, I don't know. Pretty obvious. I hate to do this. I kind of hate to do this. Wharf man, 1600. He's from Croatia. Man. The one thing I know about Central Europeans, Eastern Europeans, is that they're never bad at chess. I always tell the joke about my Romanian pub experience where I beat me with the board. The board was turned the wrong way. Um, no, but I've been living in, in Hungary for 14 years. Now Wolfman dropped a piece. So if he didn't drop a piece... He would have been doing pretty okay. I mean, he got to the point where his position was okay. And he just, like, lost his mind. Hallucinated. He just simply hallucinated. So, basically, um, I was relinquishing my, my attack on e5. I was going to break down and play d6. And I don't think my advantage is that crushing. Um, maybe white can just play something like rook to d1 and, and try to hold on. I mean, black is better, but... Wolfman didn't have to, to freak out here and lose a piece. F4 with the idea of rook f5 and the pawn falls. Yeah, I mean, actually, f4, it's it's like anti-positional, but maybe very effective. You know, that's the kind of move like a computer would, would much more easily play than a human being. Because I'm looking for knight f4, thinking like my pawns get overextended. Um, you know, so it's kind of a tough move to play for a human. But it's probably like the kind of move that might very well be best. Exactly. Rook is somewhat limited on e8 now. So we're going to re redeploy. And we're going to win this game. And we're going to keep the lead solidly. But there were no other masters except for Cormoran, who beat me. Now we're up two pieces for three. No, I was going to say three connected past pawns. That's what happened in the Abadis' game, believe it or not. Strange as it may seem. These three pawns remained. His opponent also sacked on b5, but soundly, in, this, in the same opening that we had. And, uh, and he succumbed. Now we have a vicious, vicious attack against the weakened white king. It's over. Wolfman played the opening pretty well, but he started to just collapse to the initial mistake. Um, maybe I'm going to be a little bit fancy here, but I could sack a piece with the 
the knight f4, but let's just do this. Um, I also have queen a7, which might be strong. <laughs> okay, he's just giving up. Giving, give a giveaway chess. He's playing giveaway chess. Guys, thanks for, for joining me. Thanks for playing. We will be back again tomorrow with a noontime stream. And it will be over soon. So we've got 30 minutes left in the stream. And we're doing pretty well. Dominating this one to the first round loss. And we had a draw with, with JCS where we were slightly worse against him. So it hasn't been all wins. Good luck all body. Let's get some, some bit war going on. What happened to Nils? He usually likes to fight for the bit war. But he left pretty early. I don't think he played in the tournament. We've got 42 players and 56 viewers, which is cool. Viewership is down this past couple weeks because of the World Championship and trying to stream against that. I can't wait till the World Championship is over. I'm actually kind of sickened by it being determined by rapid play, but that's the way it's set up. Turkey Farm, good to see you. I saw a whole bunch of turkeys the other day. A massive, massive, what do you call it? Like a, a cluster of turkeys? Gaggle of turkeys. That's geese, right? What is it called when you, like there's a whole bunch of turkeys at the same time? Um, you know, different animals have different words for that. Turkey farm, what's the name for a large group of turkeys? Do you say a flock of turkeys? A cluster. <laughs> cluster of turkeys. Dude, there was like 20 turkeys. I drove by them. They were like standing on somebody's, somebody's lawn. Hyenas, Massachusetts. Bishop B4. Um, okay, the classical Nimzo. Haven't had one of these in a while. No problem at all. Oh. One of my neighbors. No problem at all. I'm also a Hungarian resident, but I am not in Hungary now. I'm back in my home country of the United States. I will be hopefully going back to Hungary in the spring. Just don't know when. So F3, an interesting move here from, from our Hungarian opponent. Um, Jóestet Kivánuk. F3. Okay, this move, you know, obviously attacks E4, but I wonder if I could try something tricky like C5. It feels like Bishop E7, E4 just kind of plays into his hands. You know, F3 is an interesting move. I'll have to look and see if this has ever been played because it makes a lot of sense. No problem at all. Welcome. Do I know you from Hungary? Okay, let's try this. Unfortunately, not all Hungarians are good chess players. <laughs> well, there was that saying about Hollywood that, like, it's not enough to be Hungarian. You have to be good, too, or something like that. Because there were so many, so many Hungarian immigrants that went out to Hollywood years ago to work in the film industry in different capacities. There was a joke. <laughs> But, um, all right, f3, c5. Let's try to play, you know, taking advantage of f3, trying to put pressure on d4. Because his strong point is like e4, but he's kind of, his weaker point is d4. He can't play d5. I'm, I'm having hallucination. He can play d5. That's the problem. There's d5, cd, cd, knight takes d5, queen e4 check, and I'm screwed. See, he may not notice that. I mean, unless I want to play some sort of bizarre attempt to trap his queen, which may not be a joke. d5, ed, cd, knight d5, queen e4 check, knight on d e7, queen takes a8, and then knight c6, knight e c6, trying to trap his queen. I really seriously doubt that's going to work. It's interesting, but how am I going to execute trapping his queen? No, very difficult to do. I'm playing better and better as I play more games. Typically, I play badly in the first couple of games of one of my streams. Can you see the format? What? What's that? 
Chess Passer Wales, what's up? Can you see the format of the World Championship changing, Will? It's a gobble of turkeys. It's seriously a gobble of turkeys. I don't know. Is that a joke? Most famous actress period, I'd say, is Jaja. So Jaja is Hungarian, right? Um, Jaja Gabor. 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 So E3. This is a safe move. Now we just have something that looks a little bit more normal. Um, why am I getting this, like, blinking? Your turn. Put pressure on the d4 pawn with knight c6. So he kind of could have played d5, I think. It's a sharper try. Okay, but he's he's been restrained from playing e4, and that's that's important, you know? So it's like, you stay on your side of the fence. <laughs> All right? Um... No intention of, of making migrant jokes. I just meant it literally. Like, stay on your side of the, the Trump wall. But seriously. All right, E3. If he's not going to play E4, I'm not scared. You know, that was the thing that really would bother me, you know. Um, okay, it's a lot like a... Now it's just a lot like a, a Samish Nimzo if he plays A3 or something like that. Turns out it's not a gobble of turkeys, and I was lied to as a child. I have the feeling it's a gaggle of geese, but what is the number for a large number of turkeys? What is the number? Yeah, I don't know what to do here. Um, having trouble. I guess the default move is castle. If you don't know what to do, just castle. Waste all your time, then castle, without any plan whatsoever. No, we can try to open up the position. He's a little bit lagging in development. Maybe I can just play straight up like d5 or something like that. A rafter. It sounds like a kind of drink glass or something. A rafter. I mean, I know what literally a rafter is, but the only rafter I know is like the roof kind. This opens up his bishop, man. This is probably a bad move. Theoretically a bad move. I could see myself criticizing one of my students for doing this. Why did you do that? Exchanging prematurely and, and opening up his bishop on c1. But you've got to do something, you know? It makes some sense. Actually, this isn't bad. I could even take with the queen if he takes on d5. I think this is okay. We're trying to take advantage of his lack of development. I mean, one thing that can happen in the classical limzo, basically classical limzo, queen c2, uh, or some people call it the Capablanca variation. But I have experience playing both sides of this, and, and I have lost games particularly badly with white when I failed to develop my pieces. Actually, it's the same thing with f3, another variation where white can violently fall behind in development. Um, so it's kind of a combination of those two lines here. Now we have a very traditional pawn structure, the IQP. So what are we going to do? We're going to play knight c6, put pressure on that lonely pawn. The lonely pawn. It's a good name for a chess streamer who's looking for a date. All right, knight c6. It's not easy here in zombie land, I'll tell you guys. <laughs> the only thing there are is is turkeys and zombies where I live. Nothing to do. You don't see many people. Okay, so we've got a combination now. Knight takes d4. Combination. Knight takes d4 and then takes and then queen takes d4. A b4, queen c4. White is just... I think white is just losing there. He's down a pawn, and his king can't castle. And the opposite color bishops aren't really a bad thing, because they make it more, like, dynamic. Unless, of course, this is some sort of weird blunder, but I don't think so. It's pretty straightforward. The lonely panda. Panda is lonely in Budapest, guys. You guys have to send extra support. 
fly panda to the United States. That'd be awesome. To get him like a first class seat on a commercial airline. Like a stuffed animal. I wonder if they would go for that. Would a major airline let you check a stuffed animal in if you were willing to pay for them? And you could do it as like a gag for like YouTube or something. I bet that would be awesome. That would totally work. Some YouTube YouTuber could totally do that. I mean, I just don't have enough of a name. Put Panda in like first class. Stream the whole thing. All right, no problem at all does have a problem. He's got a problem, he's got two problems, the position and his clock running out. So we have 18 minutes left, we've got a, a solid lead. Who is Ambon Carlson, by the way? Perth Amboy. There's a city in New Jersey. Ambon. I could just take on, on E2. I think that's the simplest solution here. Nothing wrong with that. Just trade pieces when you're up material. I'm up a pawn for nothing, so I don't mind trading queens. It's not much, though, admittedly. Maybe I let him a little bit off the hook. I might have had something better. But with the time, should just resign. What are you talking about? Acer? Acer? I don't think white should resign here yet, though. I don't think you're talking about this game. No problem at all is only down a pawn. So I don't think you should give up. Probably take on b4. Then I take on c1. He takes with a rook. And he's only one pawn down. That's actually not that bad for white. I have half a mind not to trade here on c3. Old people always say that. Half, I have half a mind. Yeah, you have just half a mind. Um, all right, no, seriously. Let's just not, not give up our wonderful bishop for a silly knight. I feel like giving him the bishop pair would give him some real, something to live for. Some really strong dark scored bishop. We don't want to give him something to live for. Keep it simple. Just a pawn up. Alright, now... The thing is, I mean, just trading pieces isn't necessarily that great for me. I keep wanting to, like, hang a pawn here with, with A6. Let's try... Let's try dropping a pawn. Please don't play that. Oh, he saw through my trick. He's basically trying to hoover the position now, it looks like. He's going to trade everything. 1679. Getting a little too close to a draw here. I wonder if I could trap his bishop somehow. I don't know, but it has to leave. Probably I should have played b5 before when I had the chance. I don't know, the problem at all is getting pretty tough suddenly. He's getting to be a problem. It wasn't supposed to be a problem. Played the opening. Well, the opening itself a little later, like the, the late opening, early middle game, he made a lot of mistakes. But here I have to be careful still. There are still sharks in these waters. Don't underestimate no problem at all. That's our first motif here. Don't underestimate anybody. I mean, I think that's a really important like thing to live by. 
life hack. Chess, chess life hack. Bishop c6, rook c7. Extremely annoying. Um, all right. Got to crawl our way out again. F5 might not be a bad idea at some point. Take away the e4 square from his pieces. There you go. Take away the h4 square from his rook. g4. No, it's it's a problem. It's getting to be a problem. No problem at all is, is being a problem. Alright, he's tied down to the, the b2 pawn. So that's key. He ended up defending really well. Wow, he's gonna make this work somehow? I mean, it's a two for one sale, right? Knight g5. He could lose a piece somehow. He gave up here. Tough game at the end. He defended well. Who is Ambon Carlson? I have never played them. They're in second place. Jacob's in third. Ambon lost one game. They lost to no problem at all, of all people. Who I just played. Draw with Jacob. Draw with Morales. So he's pretty competent. He beat some good players. Hisidnuns he beat. He beat Hisidnuns twice. He beat Nefidov. We only got time for like one more game, guys, if we're lucky. We are going to win this time. Asterbait on... What? What's up with Asterbait? What are a group of pandas called? Good question. We'll look that up. Sadly, pandas aren't that plentiful to probably have a group name. Too endangered. Thanks everybody for playing. And I will see you next Tuesday. We'll have a Blitz tournament at the same time on Tuesday night. I usually do 5 plus 2, mix mix up the, the two time controls. <laughs> Thank you. Chess Pots or Whales, thanks for joining us. Um, anyway, guys, please support the stream if you can. Just um, subscribe. Tomorrow we're going to be playing 12 noon. 12 noon Eastern time, conflicting with the World Championship. But while we play some weird Wednesday unusual openings, stuff I don't normally play, we're also going to take a look at, at the rapid games that are going on in the World Championship playoff. So a little bit of everything tomorrow and everything day. All right, 11 minutes. I should be able to get one more game. It usually won't count at this time control, though. If I get like a 7 plus 2, both sides have 7 minutes. Yeah, the 11 minutes may not be enough. But it doesn't matter. I've got the lead solidly after losing the first round. Wow, I came back and held to a draw with... I gave, <laughs> gave a draw to JCS. He gave me, no, he did give me a draw last week, I think, when I was clearly in trouble. So we got 45 players this week. We had over 50 viewers. Not too bad. I'd like to see the viewership get up to, like, 75. So if you guys know anybody who you think would like the stream um, and you never told them about it, please share, you know, our stream. So if you have a friend who plays chess like you and, and you think they would appreciate the stream, please feel free to share our stream and and let them know about it. Your friends, your girlfriend, your your um, you know, your chess club friends, whatever. You know, your friends at the laundromat. It doesn't matter. Just just tell them. All right, Bishop D four. A group of pandas is called an embarrassment. Well, like yeah, when they're like pooping in the street and stuff. Pandemonium. Good one, Merle Dixon. Thank you. E4. Um, Ch 
Chess Pets or Whale says, I'll feature you on a chess face group. Whoa, I'm going to lose on time. I'm playing Amboy Carlson. I'll feature you on a chess Facebook group that I'm general manager of. 25,000 members. 25th, 2050. 250 even. 1,000 members. That'd be awesome, Chess Pats or Whales. Totally. Um, you know, I'd be help, happy to help you, too. Um, so what is this fish rack house? She doesn't like the other server and needs help. Maybe you can reach out to her, possibly. She has ambitions. All right. Knight F3. I think I played a correspondence game with, with Orlova, but she just like resigned or something really early in like after five moves. Didn't really go, go too far. All right. I don't know who this guy is. He's probably a good player, um, but it's not a new account. Bishop D3 is a very strange move. He dropped a piece. Nervous about the big matchup. He dropped a piece. That's stupid. I'm sorry, man. It's so silly to drop a piece there. All right. He's going to play it out, though. It's, <laughs> it's going to count or it's not going to count. He's just going to drop everything. F5. I think I should play E4 here and give the material back to trade queens. I think this is a good practical example of a situation where you're like up a piece. I'm going to guarantee an exchange of queens. So there's no accident that's likely to happen if I can force a trade of queens. Accidents definitely happen when you're up a piece, very commonly in chess. And I just don't want that to happen here. Knight d1 was a prudent move because if, if he had played rook takes, I had knight g4 there. So he's not giving up, though. It's never anything to be gained by giving up, although, you know, maybe it would matter for his standing if he could play one more game. If he resigned against me, technically, I'm trying to talk him into resigning. If he resigned against me, technically, he might get one more game, you know, against a different player and ensure his second place finish. But he's basically got nothing to gain from this. Darn it. Knight g4. I wish my f7 was protected. Probably I should just castle or something. Man, that's that's annoying. I want to play knight to g4, but he has bishop g1. Knight takes and then bishop f7 at the end of the day. Although that probably doesn't even matter that much. Oddly enough. I don't know. All right. When you're going to change the profile pick to a panda or something instead of a green box, yeah, I should. The green box is definitely kind of old. All right, let's do the thing here. Um, 608. We got a 608 here. You mean you don't like the green box? The green slime box? Trade pieces. Trade pandas. I guess I should just defend my stuff and castle. <laughs> Sadly, I'm just going to castle like a loser. It's so sad to do this. This game is not even going to count. It'll never finish in time. It's letting me into D3. Alright, I'll make a note to change. You don't like the, the green box. I was never a big fan of the green box. Yeah, that's pretty lame, dude. I agree. <laughs> All right, this is it for today, guys. It's going to end up... I'm going to be in first. It's a battle for second between this guy and our moderator, Mr. JCS. 
Can I finish him off in time? Technically, I don't have enough time. Time for a touchdown. We have enough time for a touchdown. <laughs> He's not giving up. He resigned. All right. So we've got first place. I think that's it for today, guys. For us, we might get another pairing, but um, that's it for us for the tournament standings. We've got Ambon Carlson and Jacob tied for second. Jacob, are you still playing? Jacob's still playing against Hissidunce. Let's see. Uh-oh. Hissidunce can be tough. This looks like a real battle. Like a French. Theoretical French. Yeah. So Hissidunce experienced player. Jacob's got some counterplay on the queen side with, with the dark square. So very much like a Karo Khan. This Rubenstein French. They just started, but this game will never be finished in time to count for the standings. Your middle name is Blunder. You're starting to sound like Arsenal fan Rich there, Acerbate. Don't be so negative. Negative Nelly. Uh-oh. This could be a quick one if White is not... You know, if White goes to sleep with the switch here. It's only 2.47 left. So I'm going to stay around to, um, yeah, I've got to make a note to change my profile pic on Twitch. Um, so I have to write notes to myself. I just, I have a huge wall filled with like colored notes to myself. Black offers a draw. Accepted. Oh no, it was strategic draw. So. Jacob takes the strategic draw to get the uh, to get the second place in the arena. No hissed notes in second place. Oh no. Wait, how did that work? I don't understand what just happened. Oh, hissed notes had a streak starter going, and so the draw actually ended up hurting Jacob in a way, but not really because he jumped ahead of Ambon Carlson too. They both jumped ahead of Ambon Carlson. And tournament pairings are now closed, so Anne von Carlson doesn't have another game. He can't catch up. Morales can't. Morales had a terrible run there at the end. Nobody could catch them, so it was a strategic draw. His Hiddens take second. Jacob will take third. Thanks, Chompito, for playing. Last minute of the tournament. What's going on? So I'm done. His Hiddens is done. Jacob's done. Ambon's done. Morales, he's still playing. Let's see what he's doing against Nefidov. The last game that could count. But how much does Morales have, by the way? Can he actually... No, if he was to win, no, it wouldn't matter. It just doesn't matter. But anyway, just for fun, let's see what's happening there. Is it over? Um, I just want to see this game. A good battle between Nefidov and Morales. Two of our regulars. I would have said Morales is playing the black side of the Accelerated Dragon. It's a modern, and it's like an Accelerated Dragon. It's like a... Actually, I use this against Ephedov, too. But I use the Kar Karo Khan move order. This is interesting. He played Bishop G7 in D5 here, trying to play a weird kind of Scandinavian. Hmm. Confusing Nefidov with a weird D5. But Nefidov has a nice grip on the c5 square what happened he just lost a piece he's up the exchange okay what just happened here oh morales blundered in exchange he must be getting tired and he's just dropping in exchange both these guys european though nefidov has an hour it's an hour earlier for nefidov so he has an advantage in in the uk instead of in spain it's not fair it's too late for morales too early for nefidov with the one hour difference he had a terrible run so that's it for that tournament we're going to close it out sparkle horse arena i'm first unfortunately cormoran the guy who beat me in the first game couldn't stay so he had to leave 
and no one really challenged me for first place. I finished first, Hissed Notes was second, and that's a great performance. The second time that Hissed Notes finished second, I think, or third last week. And then Jacob also continuing to play very well. What, did he lose one game today? He lost one game, but that, that player might have been somewhat suspicious, apparently very, very strong. So a really solid result for, for Jacob. Ambon Carlson, Morales, Nefidov, Mule Skinner, Van Erk managed to finish in 8th place, even though he's only 1,700. And then there's some other guy who won 3-0. Three, three and three and, oh. and then Champa, who played for the first time, right? Um, thanks, guys, for playing. Um, is Jacob actually a JCS? Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> Chestosterone under, under cornered. We got a lot of people here. Cormoran only played four games and left. Actually, Corman, Cormoran lost to Morales and Champa. So those guys knocked him out of the tournament after he beat me. Really good event, guys. Thanks for joining me. Thanks... Thank you, Merle Dixon, for donating 200 bits tonight. And thank you, Dim, for the 600 this week already. Queen Savage with 38, a new new player on the stream. And Acerbate Mining Bits for 10. Thanks a lot, man. I will see you guys tomorrow, 12 noon, here. Weird Wednesday, unusual openings. Thanks, JCS, for, again, you know, moderating. And congratulations to his notes and Jacob for finishing second, third. Congratulations to you guys who finished in the top 10. Good job. Thanks, everybody for the uh for the for the rest of uh everybody else in the stream thanks for just joining us for subscribing and uh don't forget about my youtube channel video chess training on youtube thanks uh chess uh pots or whales for the uh, facebook uh promotion and um and anything else you guys can do you know to help me support the stream and, and to sort of grow it a little bit if we can get more notoriety that's cool i'll work on the <laughs> changing the twitch pick anyway um i'll see you guys later thanks for joining us and from the pandas and myself Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys. Take care, and I'll see you tomorrow.